Be sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications on future uploads. Hello everyone, Simon Bart here, or you can call me Sully. In continuing with reviewing Blue Sky Studios movies, and after having reviewed Rio last time, I figured to go over its sequel that came out three years later. And surprisingly, I liked it more than the original film. In some areas. Released in April of 2014, and to feature a Samba variant of the 20th Century Fox logo, the movie is... Rio 2. With Blue and Jewel now together and having three kids of their own, they live in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, as Blue's been teaching his children, Bia, Tiago, and Carla, how he used to live as Linda's pet. That is, showing them how humans live. But Jewel wants Blue and the kids to live like birds, yet Blue can't let his own life with humans go. Meanwhile, Linda and Tulio, having been married, are out in the Amazon to set a smuggled bird free into the wild, but soon get caught in the rapids, leading them to find out that there's more Blue Stinks macaws, as they now reside somewhere in the Amazon. When Blue and Jewel get word of this, they decide to head to the Amazon to find their species, yet Blue wants to find Linda and Tulio, relying mostly on the GPS and other tools he brings along in a fanny pack. Eventually, the bird family made it to the Amazon, as the Blue macaws found them and bring them to their home, hidden deep in the jungle. There, Jewel finds her father, Eduardo, her Aunt Mimi, and her friend Roberto, as the Macaws celebrate Jewel's return to her kind. And they welcome Blue and the kids to their home. Yet, as Jewel and the kids decide to stay with the Macaws and quickly adjust to the new life, Blue has a hard time adjusting to it, since he still lives like a human, and Eduardo decides to show and teach him how the Macaws live in the Amazon, and tries to have him lead the fanny pack, as human items are not allowed in their home. All the while, Linda and Tulio try to find the Blue Sphinx macaws, but find loggers cutting down trees in the Amazon, while Nico, Pedro, and Raphael are holding some singing and dancing auditions as their spotlight for Carnival in Rio, and go with Blue and his family to find more talent in the Amazon, and while Nigel, who's been regaining his acting career, finds and follows Blue to the Amazon, as he plans to get revenge on Blue for causing him his flight and looks, and he's accompanied by an anteater named Charlie and a frog named Gabby, who's in love with Nigel, despite that she believes to be poisonous. Okay, despite that I like the sequel over the original, there are one too many things going on within the plot, and in some ways, parts of it could have been trimmed down. I mean, not that they're bad in any way, they are enjoyable in their own right. But the two side stories involving Nigel and Raphael, Pedro and Nico don't serve the main plot a lot, aside from crossing paths with each other. I could easily see Nigel's story cut from the film entirely, and be sort of a mini-movie showing what happened to the side character and what his place would be in the main movie. Much like how Pixar did with the Wally short Bernie, or how Disney did with the Lion King 1.5, or the Frozen short Once Upon a Snowman. Because having it exist in the movie barely does anything. But it does present some good moments, such as Gabby, who's my favorite character in the film. Charlie the Anteater has some good moments, such as using his tongue in various ways and being the only character who never talks. And it's also good to see Nigel more, as I enjoyed him in the last film still as fun and intimidating as before. The other side story with Pedro, Nico, and Raphael isn't too bad as it makes for a good finale, and Carla is involved in it as well, as these three are going to the Amazon to find talent and are the only reason Carla goes with her family, so at least there's that. Yet what's fun about this side bit is seeing the animals audition, including a rapping sloth who sleeps after every rap she does. There are some funny bits during this point too, and it does show some hilarious injuries and deaths for a G-rated movie. Yes, the first movie was rated G despite some various butt-shaking shots and some stranger moments, yet this one's kind of on a new level. But the film's central focus is on Blue and his family finding their kind, and Blue helping them out in the end. Plus, it's also Blue trying to fit in, and it doesn't go in an embarrassing or awkward direction like these stories would do, since it isn't a fish out of water take of it. Not to mention that the film is nice not to use the cliché of the hunk trying to hit on the girl, since he knows she's married and isn't butting in on it. 
but it does use the trope of the father-in-law or father figure not getting the main character's name right, which isn't too bad as it's mentioned about three or four times. And yes, there is an environmental subplot with the deforestation of the Amazon, led by Big Boss, and yes, that's what he goes by, but not only is this character a stereotypical rich tycoon who doesn't care about wildlife and people saving the trees, he also doesn't have any other traits aside from liking lollipops and owning a pet monkey. And he has quite an ugly facial design in my opinion. And there's also points where Eduardo thinks all humans are bad, and has to have the macaws hide away once their home is destroyed. At the point with this film's release, all of these environmental bits are done to death, as it's been done one too often in other films. Yet it's more of a side thing in this film, and it doesn't come into play until the climax where all the animals of the Amazon fight back, which makes this cliché storyline more enjoyable. And Blue being turned against by his kind wasn't because of him bringing Linda and Tulio to the macaws, but because of him failing to fit in, as the final straw was of Blue taking a Brazil nut from another macaw clan, resulting in a war between the red and blue macaws, of a soccer-like game to Blue, yet it's war to the birds, which alone is a funny insight, ending with Blue scoring for the other team. Plus the pig being a classic excitable soccer announcer is a nice touch. What else is nice are the songs, which, while on the same level as the ones in the first film, have about the same feel. I quite enjoy Beautiful Creatures for the lovely dances, makeup, and finally getting Jewel a flower on her head. And Nigel's rendition of I Will Survive is quite good, and each one is offered a decent enough runtime, given the film is 6 minutes longer than the last one. There's also some nice and funny bits of humor at times, such as when Nigel inadvertently partakes in the Amazon auditions. He goes by the name of Bob, all while a leaf covers his face. There's even a montage sequence of Blue and his family traveling to the Amazon, and it's partly done in a pop-up book style, which looks neat, and it's also done for the end credits, which also look neat. So overall, it's a fairly decent sequel, but more for the songs, better main story, and a handful of characters. But there is one thing unanswered from the first film. What happened to Blue's parents? He's shown all alone in the beginning of the first film, and yet his folks never showed up anywhere else in the last film, or even this one? Maybe if Blue Sky hasn't shut down, this would be the setup of Rio 3, of Blue finding his parents, since Jewel found her father. Now I've already mentioned the actors who voiced the characters in the last film, so I'm going over the new cast, which are fairly nice. Christian Chenoweth voices Gabby, Andy Garcia voices Eduardo, Bruno Mars voices Roberto, Amanda Steinberg voices Bia, Pierce Gagan voices Tiago, Rachel Crow voices Carla, Rita Marino voices Mimi, Philip Lawrence voices Felipe, Miguel Ferreira voices Big Boss, Natalie Morales voices Newscaster, Janelle Monet voices Dr. Monet, Kate McCusty voices Tiny, Jason Harris Katz voices Old Bird, and, because I forgot to mention last time, Babel Gilberto voices Eva. As a whole, this movie is a little better than the first, but only in some places. The characters, both old and new, are fine, the story is a bit decent, the animation is lovely, and the songs are okay. For a sequel film from director Carlo Sardana, who directed the first film, this one is a step up from the original, with more funnier moments, most of it taking place in the wild, and a better plot with a more better, yet cliche, environmental message, which is more of a side thing that becomes a big factor in the film's climax. The downsides are the additional stories that don't add much to the main plot, and could have been left out, along with additional characters that either need more to them, or be part of the main story more. Outside of those, I pretty much like this film over the previous one. It may not be one of my favorite sequels given the points I mentioned, and the original film has stuff I enjoy more, but it's overall a semi-decent movie with a few hiccups along the way. So today, this movie we're going to rate of 2.5 plus stars. So thank you for joining me, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Facebook or Twitter, support me on Patreon, and tune in for next month when I take a look at all of the Ice Age movies.